Now, as we have known about Duchenne tree, let's implement it in a regression problem. It is quite similar to what we did it for the classification problem, but now it will pro uh, provide us continuous output. That is our uh, answer. Whatever answer we will get will be in continuous format. So the uh, previously in classification, we were having discrete values. The difference between discrete and continuous can be explained with an example. That is, let's take an example of discrete. Okay. So a problem statement for discrete output will be uh, to predict if there will be rainfall tomorrow or not. So the answer will be either in yes or no. That is either it will be one or zero. One represents yes and no represents uh, zero. So these are discrete values. Now what are continuous values? Continuous values are somewhat like uh, the problem statement will be what will be the price of this kind of product. So we have a user base or uh, we have different kind of product of different genres and we have a new product and we have to predict out the price of it. Now the price cannot be much in a discrete value. Okay. Or let's say the weight of an person. Uh, what will be the weight of an person if his height is this much? What is the average weight of the person? So it will be on continuous value. It can be anywhere between 0 to 100. Okay. Let's take... Uh, the range of 0 to 100 and from 0 to 100 there can be numerous numbers between them it can be 55.845 it can be 55.9 it can be 60.2 so we have a number of continuous value in that range so that is what we meant by discrete and the continuous value now decision tree regression observes feature of an object trains the model in the structure of a tree to predict data in the future to produce meaningful continuous output so let's take the example. Okay, let's uh, remove all of these. Okay. So we have an example over here where we have the root node. You can just recall this is the root node. These are the decision nodes. Okay. And these are the leaf node. Okay. And these are the leaf node. So let's write L beside of them. Okay. Again, uh, one more way to read this is this is the parent node and this is the child node. This is the leaf. Again, this is the child node. So x1 is the child node of parent x2. That's how we can read it. So rather than having an yes and no in the leaf node, what we have over here is our continuous values. So whenever we predict something from a same class, we predict it in the continuous format the leaf nodes are having answers in continuous format so let's say a value x equals to uh, 140 okay we check if x1 is less than 140 or not if yes it will move in the left if no it will move over here so x1 is less than 20 no so it will move over here okay we come over here for x equals to 40 okay now we check if x again x is less than 170 or not so yes it is less than 170 so we move over here so yes again again we check if x1 is less than uh, 40 or not so no it isn't so it moves over here so the value that we get for x equal to 140 we get the value is equal to 0 0.7 so for 140, we have the value 0 0.7. That is how decision tree regression works. Let's look into from our data set. So we are using a data set. This is a real life example, real life uh, practical example where the data set is again taken from some sources. So this is the data set that we are going to use in our lab sections. So we have genre. We have genre. We have the production cost and the profit. So these, uh, this data set belongs to games, computer games, if uh, any one of you are watched with that. So this is a data set of computer games. What this data set has is the genre of the game, let's say asset flip. The production cost of the game, that is 100. 
okay this is a total production cost how much it took out in this and the profit from it is 1000 uh, rupees let's take the example of rupees same thing for visual novel it is the production cost is 1500 and the profit is 5000 so there is our data set and for this data set we will be uh, creating a flow chart obviously we cannot see out the flow chart but we can also visualize them out just for our reference as of now we have uh, just visualized our complete uh, dictionary for this so this is how the flow chart or the decision tree looks like so we have a root node in the top and then we have some different uh, decision nodes and at the end we have the leaf nodes at the end okay so and over here we have the value rmsc value and the samples number of samples which is responsible for this uh, node okay in the top we have in total 14 samples okay so for this particular root node to make this as a root node we had a support of 14 samples that is the complete length of the data set so this is the complete data set where we have 14 values and then we can see that uh, what uh, how many values are supporting this one this node and how many values are supporting this one so this is the decision tree that we have built out for our um, data set that we will be using in the lab section and if we take an example let's say for a test case so this is from the r hypothesis we have built out this decision tree uh, let's take a test case where uh, let's say the production cost so the pc is equal to fifteen thousand. what will be the profit of it what will be the profit for this now okay so we check from we start from the root node so the production cost is less than 2750 uh, 20, so yes it is so we move over here again we check if the production cost is less than 7000 so no so we move down over here again we check if the production cost is less than 13000 or not so the production cost is not less than uh, 13000 so again we move over here we check over here that if the production cost is less than 16,000 or not. So yes, the production cost is less than 16,000. Okay, so it's less than 16,000. Again, we come over in this node and we check. We check that the production cost is less than uh, 14,750 or not. So no. So again, we move in the right hand side. And this is the last node that is the leaf node. Okay, this is a leaf node and in this we get the value of 27,000 so for the production cost of 15,000 the value okay the profit that we will be getting is 27,000 and if you check the data set which we have if you compare with some uh, production cost near leaf uh, to this so we have something 15,500 okay, and the production cost is 27,000 so this looks quite accurate so we are able to predict out or build out our machine learning model which is addition tree regression and it is doing a good job in predicting out the value so that's how the decision tree regression works that's it for this video we'll connect again and learn about the next phase of it that is a random forest regression in our next video